because I would like now to talk about a political figure who has the beam. Is just the pink. He has been he has been hit <laughs> with the pink light from the Vallis satellite. I gotta now, say. I can't say with a gun to my head that Eric Adams might not be president someday. <laughs> Honest, <laughs> honestly, it's like it's one of those things where it's like, you know, the normal amount of off putting Gavin Newsom never going to be fucking president. Can't do it. But more off putting than that, <laughs> yeah. it like brings you over to the other side That's where true. you're relatable. You bend light. Yeah. You I bend mean, the, the bullet like in wanted. I mean, like, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he is bending bullets in the truth quite, quite frequently. But like, okay. So, I said at the beginning of the episode that, like, thanks to Ron DeSantis and Eric Adams, we've had good material to talk about. This latest New Yorker profile of Eric Adams is a magnum opus. This is a masterpiece in, like, a political profile. I swear to you, reading this, art- reading this article, and there's so much stuff in it. I'm going to, like, I- I've highlighted the best parts. But, like, I really get, that, like, Eric Adams, think- like, he is or thinks he is a messiah figure. Yeah. He has been anointed by God <laughs> to, like, create a new man out of vegan dieting and dubious anecdotes about your childhood and past. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's dive into this. The, the article is called Eric Adams Administration of Bluster by Ian Parker for The New Yorker. It begins like this. Mayor Eric Adams' exuberant self-regard stops just short of biceps kissing. <laughs> he has talked in public about the warmth of his own smile, describing <laughs> Healthy at Last, a book that he published in 2020 about his disciplined response to a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Adams told the podcast host, every time I read it, I find another nugget and say, wow, this is a good point that I made. <laughs> <laughs> Adams, Adams once told an audience, I get out of the shower sometimes and I say, damn, he has said that he is the face of a new Democratic Party. <laughs> <laughs> On a recent study, he, okay, so he, wrote, he wrote a book called, uh, what the fuck is it? Uh, uh, Healthy at Last. He wrote that book in 2020 and he says he's, he's still reading it. He's still he's, reading his own book and discovering new insights. On a recent Sunday evening, Adams, who was 62 and was born in Brooklyn, although he has sometimes said he was born elsewhere, was in a restaurant on the Upper West Side. His shirt was white and uncreased, and he wore a stud earring, an adornment that he adopted while running for mayor. He removes the stud ahead of events likely to have a more serious tenor, as if lowering the flag to (laughs) half-mast. Adams ordered French fries and unprompted said, this is going to be one of the most fascinating mayoralties in history. He later added, Anyone who believes there's not a God, they need to watch my journey. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe me. Ju- don't believe don't me. Just watch. watch is the official slogan yep, of yep, New York City. Yep. And, and actually, Eric Adams, uptown funk. One of the only things he has actually done as mayor is revamp the iconic I heart New York uh, like tourism oh, right. slogan. They changed like, the font he or changed, something. Like, he changed, it's dog shit. I think it should be in New York. Don't believe me. Just watch. Brought to yeah. you by Eric Adams. <laughs> He's also the only mayor in history that I know of who comes, who has his own theme song. Yeah, that's the, right. Yeah. He plays the "Where Streets Are Made Of" song hey, yep. every time he gets on stage. Yeah, well, that, there's actually a, a little more about his hype music here, but it says uh, Adams is well into his second year in office, but his mayoralty still has a victory night air. He often repeats a phrase that makes a parable of his electoral success by linking it to stories about his troubled teenage years, which became central to his campaign dyslexic arrested rejected now i'm elected (laughs) adams likes to ask when does the hard part start although there are members of his staff who wish that he wouldn't he has said that if god had found the eric adams story less compelling he could have made me the mayor of topeka (laughs) (laughs) fuck you topeka i i that is another thing i love about him he's constantly just shitting on flyover (laughs) states i know that (laughs) um Yet Adams still seems unusual in a democratic setting for the extent to which he treats his own self, both his physical presence and his biography, as related in a few truncated scenes, like a civic asset and a form of government. In the late 80s, when Adams was in the New York City Transit Police, he could bring home a little, he could bring a little order to a beery Coney Island subway car just by stepping onto it. His mayoralty attempts to reenact this stance. To borrow from the Jada Kiss song that played as Adams approached his hotel ballroom stage on election night, he runs the Champ is Here administration. <laughs> so J- Jada is uh, Jada and uh, Jay-Z and Alicia Keys. Skipping ahead a little bit, it says, but his overriding instinct is to find ways to be visible. Adams' diary of official events seems far fuller than those of his predecessors, Bill de Blasio and Michael Bloomberg. 
they might have been glad to skip, say, a Croatian flag raising or a mayoral forum on drones. New York is now led by someone who takes deep pleasure in the pleasure people take in seeing him. Adams recently told an audience of his visits to an outreach center for the unhoused people. If you can see their faces when they walk down the line and they're given food and they say they see their mayor, Adams has dismissed less responsive constituents as naysayers, haters, and little people. So he just like goes to a soup kitchen. Did you just see just see homeless people light up when their mayor gives them a bowl of soup? My favorite Eric Adams thing is that no matter the event, no matter what it's about, he always brings it back to his personal mythos. I'm going to read yeah. you something that Eric Adams said, uh, and I want you to guess what what a appreciation day this was for like who 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 was being honored this day eric you were dyslexic it didn't matter you made mistakes and were arrested you were rejected eric you stay focused you can be elected to be the mayor of the city of new york that is what your children are seeing your children are seeing that don't think they don't notice that don't think that they don't recognize the diligence you are doing Okay. okay, who was that? Uh, was that his birthday? What do you think that was? A commemoration of the D Day landing. Close. Transcript Mayor Adams hosts food and culinary staff appreciation reception. <laughs> uh, there's so many good details here. Uh, it says Adams also has a personal schedule, which includes cigar bar time with his son, Jordan Coleman, and you late nights at Zero Bond, a members club in NoHo. He loves that place. Yeah. I love how much he hangs out with his son. Yeah. That is a huge... His son is so involved in everything. Um, did you guys... You, you guys are familiar with the uh, recent events in New York, the Kai Sinat giveaway? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For people oh, who don't man, know, yeah. Kai Sinat is an, probably the biggest uh, streamer in, in the world right now. He's an incredibly popular... He's like uh, 21 or something. Super, super talented broadcaster. Unfortunately, he had a giveaway in New York City where he was saying he was giving away PS5s. It was not that well organized. Thankfully, no one died, but it was just, you know... You, was, yeah, Union Square turned into a fucking riot. Yeah, right? and Eric Adams, his first response to this was... I called my son, his like 30 year old son and said, were you there? And he said, no. <laughs> and it's like, I, no disrespect to Kai Sinat. He, I, he's been charged. I really hope he doesn't get in actual trouble for this. But if you were 30 and you went to the Kai Sinat giveaway <laughs> and went crazy, you are a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> that's even possible because yeah, you're, you're, that... you're the son you're the 30 year old son of the mayor of new york and you're like an opportunity for a free playstation i'm fucking <laughs> yeah. jumping on that yeah it's like if you're the eric Adams son you could get a free playstation from like anyone yeah. like it's like you just it, take one out of gamestop nobody's calling anybody yeah oh my but it, like though he framed it in such a way where it's like Wait, he was there. <laughs> and Eric was probably there too. He might have been there. He might like elbow and 12 year olds. Yeah. I got to say, it is something that, that there are people who can be that, have that much success at the streaming level. And I only hear about them when people are killed in their presence. <laughs> like, I, I will never hear about them if they are just doing their thing. It will never occur to me. He, thankfully, no one was killed. Um, but uh, no, he's, Kyrie Ed is, incredibly fucking famous that's wild but, and, but culture is so yeah, there's no monoculture anymore. the monoculture is over by we were the last ones to ever experience yeah. it really yeah and that's that's like all of this shit is us trying to make sense of the, I know. the future shock of the, I, I just turned decaying, 90 years old a decaying mm -hmm. monoculture um uh when okay when we met for dinner a few weeks earlier adams had agreed that he could be thought of as someone trying to embody new york as one of his advisors <laughs> told me to him he is the city because he's running the city to sustain this ambition, Adams follows a self-care regimen. So he's Hobbes' Leviathan. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I am the state. Uh, to sustain this ambition, Adams follows a self-care regimen that includes meditation, a diet rich in plants, naps in the car, and the kind of breathing exercises that he has ordered city schools to teach and that he encourages staffers to emulate. Rachel Atchison, a close advisor, told me without complaint that under Adams' influence, she now sleeps with her mouth taped shut in order to force myself to breeze through my nose. Her dreams, she said, have become more vivid. <laughs> no shit. I would be having a nightmare if I thought if I was like sleeping in the way I'm like I'm being human trafficked or kidnapped <laughs> in the back of a van or something. My mouth is duct taped shut while I'm trying to sleep. It just <laughs> occurred to me 
Eric Adams is the American Lee Kuan Yew. <laughs> yes. Like, what would it look like if you transmorphed Lee Kuan Yew's ideas to be American? Right. Yes. This. Yep. Wellness, uh, c- mandatory veganism, all this. Uh, Adams Crystals de- up your ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adams defends his lifestyle enthusiasm, but isn't always earnest about them. When I sounded skeptical of Wim Hof, a Dutch ice bath evangelist, whose, oh, program, Adam, whose program Adams has started to follow, he laughed saying, you're going to call my idol a lunatic? For people who don't know, Wim Hof is... Joe Rogan's program has went through many phases. It's currently <laughs> in the worst phase it's ever been in, where the only guests are either Republican commentators or guys from far-flung countries who claim they've invented a new way to breathe or drink water. <laughs> Wim Hof is a breathing guru. Um, and wouldn't you know it, Eric Adams is into that. So he's just got like 15 different Rasputins hovering around him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just like, like fucking planets, uh, moons around Pl- Jupiter. Eric- just a bunch of uh, 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 snake oil salesmen and uh, maniacs and cult leaders all just vying for his attention. Yeah, um, if you are a city official and when Eric announces his plans to seclude himself and to try different mercury concoctions to attain immortality, <laughs> do not say it's nonsense. Yeah. You will be tortured to death by the <laughs> NYPD. <Yes. laughs> Tell him, good idea, boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When Eric Adams emerges from Gracie Manor with a rebus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, another little uh, tidbit here. Um, Adams, who around this time drove a BMW convertible and wore a thin strip of mustache, informed his, this is when he was like a city councilman uh, or a state senator in Brooklyn, I forget which one, but it says, um, Adams, uh, he wore a thin strip of a mustache, informed his audience that as a public official, he met some of the most intelligent, attractive ladies in the city. He added, and I'm not going to take you anywhere if you've got a tattoo on your neck with two cherries saying, lick me. It ain't happening. (laughs) (laughs) Class. (laughs) Uh, 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 (laughs) between between 2018 and 2021 uh this this talks about how like okay like his sort of like his advisors their aha moment that they were like this guy could be mayor is when he was at a brooklyn church and became vulnerable and told a personal story about how when he was a cop he would eat mcdonald's hamburgers all the time then he was like wow that was bad (laughs) that was a bad idea and they were like eric this is it (laughs) This is your thing. This is to people can oh relate. Oh my yeah. god, he is. We were talking about alchemy and rebuses and alphas and omegas. He is. He has the characteristics of Trump, but he's the complete negative image of mm-hmm. yes. They do. They have the same off-puttingness and work on the same off-putting scale. He's the only thing that can counteract Trump. He has, yeah. he has rejected McDonald's, though. Yeah, but yeah. That, that's but he, the way he rejects McDonald's is as off-putting, <laughs> but as relatable yes. as Trump's. Yes. Okay. So it says between 2018 and 2021, Adams appeared on dozens of podcasts with names such as Plant Strong and Spiritual Shit, <laughs> <laughs> and talked primarily about his response to diabetes. He sometimes recorded three or four episodes a day. He attested to the power of turmeric, the importance of doing one's own medical research. (laughs) And the grim contents of his fridge at the start of 2016. It was all processed, he once said. It was heavy with sugar, heavy with fat, heavy with processed oil. And I just threw it all out. He frequently allowed himself to be introduced as a vegan and once or twice said that he was one. Adams proposed as mayor, he'd bring food issues into every classroom. How many apples does it take to make a salad? That is math, he said. Or for geography. Where does bananas come from? (laughs) (laughs) It's just a a way to make sense of things. Food based. uh, Make it relatable. I guess you could um, introduce health foods to the infamous Lex Luthor pie equation. (laughs) (laughs) On the health podcasts, Adams was never coy about his political ambitions. But he also seemed to be claiming a place among inspirational speakers to be a guru in training. In one conversation, Adams enthused about the way that thanks to TED Talks, YouTube and podcasts, an accumulation of believers are now at a centralized spot out there in this place we call cyber. (laughs) 
<laughs> he went on, we're going to start to see believers start to come together and build these communities and these colonies. That excites me that I can go out and find other believers. And I believe our energy, our vibration will start to deal with some of the major issues that have held us back. If Adams was talking primarily, primarily about dietary views, not embraced by the medical mainstream, he was also open to a broader agenda of woo-woo thinking. He once declared a firm belief in reincarnation and described previous life as an ancient Sumerian. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've, I always said reincarnation is a more a lot, rational a lot, yeah. uh, afterlife concept than uh, Western heaven bullshit. A lot of people say that Eric Adams' is afterlife did not was not the one to invent cuneiform, but <laughs> he was the guy who sold all that shitty copper. <laughs> 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 Fucking Al Nazir. Okay. I like the idea of Eric Adams being like um, one of the minor officials uh, uh, during the Babylonian captivity. <laughs> <laughs> this is a swag captivity. <laughs> I will never get over this, by the way. We've talked before about how they asked him his favorite concert, and he said it was uh, a uh, Curtis Mayfield concert where he was paralyzed by a falling amp. <laughs> <laughs> But that isn't the thing. That's like an okay Eric Adams story. What makes it amazing and inscrutable and baffling is that th that did happen and he was there, but uh, Mayfield hadn't even started playing yet when it happened. And he called it his favorite concert. Maybe So he... the only thing he was a fan of was seeing Curtis Mayfield paralyzed. <laughs> well, Curtis Mayfield lionized the pusher man. You may more than Indian. I'm your pusher man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a really good one. A few weeks ago, I heard Adams speak at the Bethel Gospel Assembly in Harlem. Adams, who has claimed a history of fighting in boxing matches, told the congregation, I was so good in the gym, but I'd get knocked out in the ring. In the spring of 2021, Adams made a campaign stop at Gleason's, the Brooklyn's boxing gym. As Adams' hands were being wrapped ahead of a photo op, he was asked, have you ever boxed before? No, Adams replied, <laughs> adding, that, adding that he'd sometimes punched a bag at the gym. Uh, um, okay, this is a good one. Uh, last summer during a speech at a Dominican flag-raising ceremony in Bowling Green Park, Adams ebulliently noted, I may have been born in Alabama, but I'm Dominican, baby. Like what? <laughs> what is he talking about? That's that's a Biden magic. Yeah, Biden yeah, 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 yeah. Like ah, uh, call me Bidenopolis. I'm Greek. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Opa, I'm gonna smash a fucking plate. I mean, saying I'm Dominican, baby. It's like whatever. It's a. It's probably you know Dominican day or something like that. It was There's a lot Dominican of, flag. A lot of Dominicans in New York ways. City. But saying I may have been born in Alabama. <laughs> like why? Like why live? Like what? Where, like where does that come from? <laughs> it's the Colonel AI at the end of Metal Gear Solid Two. <laughs> <laughs> Because I heard Adams repeat the line six months later at an event hosted by New York Congressman Adriano Espiat. Adams' mother was born in Alabama, but Adams was not. He was born in a Park Slope hospital. Uh, Adams has said that when he was uh, uh, Adams has said that when he was six or seven, his father took him to Harlem on Saturdays to hear a man giving fiery speeches. Only years later did he realize the speaker was Malcolm X. In the first few years of Adams' life, Malcolm X did make occasional high-profile speeches in Harlem, but he was not making regular Saturday appearances. When he was assassinated in February of 1965, Adams was four. <laughs> Uh, he's a, he's mastered the same thing Trump has, which is if you just say shit all the time, you it can't be yeah. keeping track of it. So no one you could you, the risk of any specific thing you say fucking you over ro goes to zero basically. Yeah, yeah. Nothing can be held on to. So you get to say, and the strategy should be you say whatever you want, but you, you just but, but, but whatever you, you want. But like, but here's the crucial thing: you can't be too consistent. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you wouldn't be yeah. though. If yeah, you're yeah. just saying what's ever on the top of your head, you're gonna if yeah, you're a guy sure. like this, you're gonna be bullshitting. You're gonna be making stuff up just stream of consciousness. The worst thing you can do if you're gonna lie is to lie about the same things consistently. Exactly. The best thing you can do is to constantly contradict yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and you like it's you don't know what's a lie and what isn't. It's asymmetrical informational warfare. It's like, yes. it's like a Nixon's yes. madman strategy. Yeah. And yes. it's undefeatable. You cannot beat it. Eric Adams is the perfect guy for this age because it's not like Joe Biden. It's disinformation by restriction, yeah. censorship, mm -hmm. cutting off the pipeline. Yep. Eric Adams understands the information age we live in. He watched that common commercial probably 500 times. <laughs> 
he understands. He, he actually thought he was in the comment yeah. commercial. Yeah. He's like, I was comment yeah. in that commercial. Yeah. <laughs> there used to be a guy who would show us how to use Windows 7 when I lived in Brooklyn. Um, he he understands that, no, all is done by deluge now. Yes. Metal Gear Solid 2. He's Sons a, of Liberty. He's a genius. He is the and, son of Liberty. And the key thing that that does is the deluge is uh, it's relatable. Yeah. It creates a character that people can like. They some of them hate and are uh, find off putting, but huge other huge percentages of people are going to find relatable and magnetic. Same thing with Trump and like Biden. He because they will cut off and they won't let him be Biden because they're afraid of what he'll say. You just he just becomes this remote uh, phony that you can't wait to shoot him in the head. With and like your whereas like, 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 like your, when uh, Adams found his his sweet spot room. telling stories about his diabetes and stuff. Biden's like was most successful with off the cuff talking about corn pop and shit I remember like that. We made fun of corn pop. We made fun. I thought that, that was, was so stupid. stupid of yeah. us. He killed it. What did okay? Be like water. Yeah. There is stagnation versus flowing water. Yes, the, the way of water. Flowing water. The only the only thing that can fight against kagade rot. <laughs> and flowing water in the American sense is the circumstances of your birth, your diet. Everything what your childhood that, was like what your childhood was like, who you are, everything that happened in your life, it is in a constant state of flow. Yeah, because he, the thing that you are op- the premise you're operating on is that everything that is happening is not, is happening because of your will. You are you are in charge. The world is made up of your desires, and that is a form of insanity. But those sort of things are sanded down by encounters with reality. And for a supple, couple select people, God kissed people. Their fantasy never contacts reality. And so they get to go through yeah. life with a really good reason to believe that they have made everything happen. Like, like Eric they, Adams they should have, believe that he yeah. has magical powers. Yes. And he's uh, mayor of New York. The lowest, the lowest of existence. I will kill myself. I will kill myself by saying I'm going to kill Biden or whatever, right? The highest form, enlightenment, as the Buddhists understand it, there is no self to kill. Yeah. There is no self to kill. I was born in Alabama. I was born in Park Slope. Yep. I heard Malcolm X speak. I'm a <laughs> boxing champion. I got knocked out. I've never boxed. Yes. I've never touched yes. a bag. Yes. There is no self to yes. kill. Uh, Precisely because uh, anything that happens can't be anything. Uh, there's no there's no uh, ri- friction because there's a total uh, liquidity in, uh, of, of narrative. You're making the narrative new every moment something happens. To well, here, yes. here are some more narrative uh, additions from Liquid Snake here. <laughs> As Adams tells it, his adolescent years were marked by extreme highs and lows. He has often said that by the age of 12, he had an important role in New York's network of illegal gambling. Earlier, earlier this year, he declared, I was one of the top illegal runners, numbers runners in the city. <laughs> I was, that is even better than when Trump said he was the top baseball prospect yeah, was, in New York. I was Bumpy Johnson. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I think he just saw the movie uh, Hoodlum. Yeah. I, I had to fight Tim Roth. It was tough. <laughs> Shout out Bill Duke. Um, he has also said that when he was a teen, he worked for tips as a squeegee guy washing windshields at intersections, but couldn't afford a squeegee. Horatio <laughs> <laughs> Alger. This is great. Uh, Adams once said to an interviewer, when I played football for Bayside High School, we used to win championships all the time. He told me that he never played football for Bayside. <laughs> all right, this next one is my favorite. This is my favorite bit in the entire article. In a speech given at Columbia University earlier this year, Adams repeated the frequently cited but famously untrue notion that if you put a frog in cold water and then heat the water slowly, the frog will allow itself to be boiled to death. Adams added this gloss. He'd done the experiment himself in school. If you think about it, it was a terrible experiment, he said. (laughs) (laughs) He clicked. So in his mind... He was the one who discovered this thing when he boiled the frog. So in his mind, he... He mixed the concept of dissecting a frog in school with the 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 story about yeah. boiling the the frog yeah. in the pot and like well yeah we proved that in the lab in heist that's a, it's amazing yeah you're just you're 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 weaving a, a beautiful uh, rug you, the, the a gorgeous ottoman and it's being we, a, a loom of fate is is with every moment crafting it I'm just imagining my biology it. teacher Joseph Mangala. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're dissecting frogs when they were alive. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, 
just saying something about like uh like the city budget and be like you know oh if we could pass this law we'd be killing two birds with one stone something i've done by the way <laughs> it, it's it's quite it's quite terrible but effective if you can pull it off <laughs> God, I'm just imagining now a classroom of little kids trying to cook frogs in the pots of them just ha- hopping out everywhere like it's E.T. But the Eric Adams, they realized he was the reincarnation of Buddha because his frog stayed in the pot. It just, <laughs> it just looked at him yeah. and just stoically boiled. Uh, and then he used the skin of the frog as a squeegee <laughs> and then turned it over and used it to record his numbers, his, his, his winners in the numbers racket. I asked Adams if there was perhaps a longer period starting before 2016 where he was aware of his disease and not eating Big Macs. As Adams writes in Healthy at Last, his mother was diabetic and Tracy Collins, his partner, was pre-diabetic. As borough president, Adams had promoted National Diabetes Month. As I mentioned to Adams, I'd seen videos of him from well before 2016 in which he'd spoken very highly of kale. Adams had had me repeat the question, then firmly said no. Until 2016, he considered pastrami a health food. I never ate kale until I was diagnosed with diabetes, he said. I didn't even know what kale was. Meet the Regulars, a, a book of interviews done in Brooklyn bars and restaurants, included a 2015 lunch with Adams at a uh, Petro Saints. It's, it's, this is like a, a Eric Adams friend and uh, supporter restaurant. Adams compared Brooklyn's recent cultural flowering to an overweight but gorgeous woman he dated in college. For lunch, he ordered lamb and a salad of his own invention, which included kale and no dressing. That year, Adams said at a public event that he started his mornings with a smoothie made of green vegetables, including kale. In 2014, Adams had hosted a Cut the Salt event outside Brooklyn Borough Hall in which he described using a Nutribullet to make smoothies. This is how I start my morning. I put kale in the Nutribullet, he said. He added, health is better than wealth. So that's in 2014. So he's just... He just says, like, nope, never knew what kale was. Don't know. Don't know what kale is. Don't know what we're <laughs> talking about. Why would, you, why would you have to do that? Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to do that? It's like, no, no. If, if I ever had kale before then, then it's not enough of, like, a dramatic and miraculous transformation. It's not enough of a bolt from the blue. It's not enough of God's will if I knew what kale was before this moment happened. Before I had the, I couldn't have known about Jesus before I was on the road to Damascus. I you see if it was like Marco Rubio and it was something like that, I'd be like, yeah, no, he thinks it's like more dramatic if he recently discovered it and it makes him more relatable. But with Eric Adams, it's like, no, he is destroying all context and identity. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing something that's totally different. He has to, yeah, self consciously abolish all reality by denying it. Yeah. He nothing is, is true. Nothing Everything is, true. is permitted. Is permitted Everything is permitted. So he is a high functioning wizard. Like he is. Yeah. yeah. He is a real alchemist. Like he is the guy who did the magnum opus. Yes. God damn. Adams proposed. That's his Trump. This, uh, uh, Ad, this is uh, the middle of a paragraph. It says Adams proposed that the day recognize not only women of individual achievement, but also the mothers of such great men as David Dinkins, Thurgood Marshall and himself. In one of my conversations with Adams, he said of his mother, she adored me. I gave her hell growing up, but it turned out she was very, very proud. She just enjoyed being Eric Adams' mom. <laughs> uh, shout, out, you know, shout out to the moms out there who enjoy being Big the mom the of great men. Uh, another interesting little just tidbit in this. Uh, he went to high school with Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street guy. <laughs> All right, this is... This is when he's talking about his youthful gang affiliations with a Queens gang called, <laughs> called the Seven Crowns. He says, to get street cred, you've got to get some street knowledge. Adams <laughs> interviewed for a recent documentary about the Supreme Team, to which was linked to at least 20 homicides, Supreme. was also admiring of the gang's brutal entrepreneurship. Such, as street cor- such street corner CEOs shouldn't be judged from an intellectual born on third base mindset, he said. Adams can sometimes sound more forgiving of criminals with felonious ambition, go-getters, than those guilty of misdemeanors. <laughs> Last year, Adams criticized the incoming Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg for indicating his office wouldn't prosecute turnstile jumpers. Eric has told the story of, uh, it says he was like, uh, he said he, his brother talks about like the time he was arrested 
And Eric has told the story of his arrest in different ways, but he consistently describes a crime of restitution, almost of righteousness. A woman who danced at a local strip club owed Eric and Conrad money for some errands they'd run for her. The brothers maybe took a money order and a TV from her apartment. Bernie supposes, Bernie is Eric's brother, supposes that this was Eric's plan, not Conrad's. The brothers were apprehended and taken to the 103rd Precinct in Jamaica. Decades later, Bernie learned that when Eric and Conrad were in custody, officers kicked them both repeatedly in the groin. Mm -hmm. Bernie told me he was a smart mouth, and I can see him saying something smart, and then, okay, take him downstairs. In 1999, Adams talked about this incident in an unpublished interview with the journalist Juan Williams. Adams recalled that a black officer had interrupted the abuse by his white colleagues. This black guy was able to go among these white guys and stop this. He got juice. J-U-I-C-E, as the kids would say. Williams, recounting this conversation in a 2021 article for The Atlantic, wrote, Eric was drawn to power. He thought cops had great hustle. <laughs> when they're standing there <laughs> in a flock playing Pokemon Go on a fucking train platform. I um, Do you remember the um, uh, Forrest Whitaker's role on The Shield? As oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kavanaugh. Eric Adams would actually have taken down strike team. Yeah. He's, He's pissing big, on you. He's pissing he, on all of us. He would destroy Vic Mackey. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Vic, uh, Vic would have no idea what to do. Yeah. Like, like, how could you uh, anticipate? Yeah. Vic would be like, your, your wife's pussy tastes like sweet butter. And Eric would be like, I've never had butter. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then 18 sticks of Kerrygold fall out of the suitcase that he's holding. And, and Vic just turns himself in like, yeah. I can't. I, can't I, I, I killed a federal agent. <laughs> I fuck this. I can't do it anymore. Uh, Adams was quoted as saying Giuliani deserves tremendous credit for the falling crime rate. What Giuliani has done, despite serious critics who said it couldn't be done, but he had the will to do it. So it was done. That April, for example, Yang held. Sorry, this is skipping ahead. That April, for example, Yang held an event announcing that if elected, he would crack down on the corrupt use of parking placards by city employees. This is when Andrew Yang ran yes. for mayor of New York. Remember that? That was hilarious. Yeah, he did great. Uh, including, including cops. This topic could be thought of as an Adam's vulnerability. His support for broken windows policings had carved out an exception for the everyday corruption of government officials. When a non-notice Twitter user had objected to police vehicles blocking Brooklyn turning lanes, Adams compared this person to a Klan member. <laughs> <laughs> in response to Yang's remark, the Adams campaign released a statement. Violent crime is skyrocketing in New York. People are dying. Five-year-old and 12-year-old children are being shot in our streets. And Andrew Yang is focused on double parking. <laughs> this is why he's mayor and Andrew Yang isn't. Yep. Yeah. You got to just move it around. You got to keep <laughs> okay. it moving. You got to be okay. ducking and weaving. Here's, baby. here's another one. Uh, reporting during the campaign had also revealed that Adams hadn't paid tax on the rental income derived from his house in Bed-Stuy. Adams later explained that his property paperwork was in a muddle because his accountant was homeless. I know we've talked about that before, but that yeah. was really good. Hobo accountant. Still, I still want to see that USA show. He comes into the court uh, with a bindle. He opens it up on the table and gets all the papers out. On February 26, I went to an afternoon event at Gracie Mansion where in a ballroom with no other reporters present, <laughs> Adams spoke to 60 teenagers enrolled in Jack and Jill of America, the African-American leadership organization. He was asked about the good and bad of being mayor. The best, he said, was holding an event like this one. The worst, he explained to laughter, was so many haters, man. Unbelievable <laughs> level of hatred because I don't fit the model. Bald-headed, earring-wearing black man, he added. Don't get mad at me That's because... That's kind I of a <laughs> classic look, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Michael Jordan at all, I mean... Yeah, yeah I, well, I mean, it's like when I think about things that don't fit the model with Eric Adams, it's not like his physical appearance. Yeah, he's pretty <laughs> no, bog yeah. standard. It's everything about you <laughs> except your physical appearance. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's your concept of reality, time, space, <laughs> events. It's great to be raising the Serbian flag mm -hmm. here. New York Serbian community on Serbian day here. And I just want to say to y'all, I have the Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my house. I got it. I'm yeah. not wearing it right now, but you know, I, I don't say hey, the, I don't say this to many people, but me and Marika are the same person. <laughs> Mayor, I, people people used to ask Eric, you can't be you can't be Elden Lord. You're a mere champion of the Golden Order. You have red hair like the giants of, uh, on the mountaintops who 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 tend to the fell flame. Why would Merica leave Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, and marry you? It's because I have a secret. I am Merica. 
<laughs> and that's why the twin prodigies, Mikkel and Melania, are cursed with both Scarlet Rot and Eternal Childhood. When I was born, when I was born in Liernia, <laughs> and I may be, I may be Liernian, and I was married, I was married to Queen Ronaldo of the Full Moon. The first time I got married was to Merica. I've never been married. <laughs> I may be from Stormvale, but I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> he is uh, perfect for like from South Miyazaki games because of all the weird like doubling and overlapping yeah. and kind of contradictory <laughs> like <laughs> mythology. Like there, there could be weeks of lore videos made about Eric Adams <laughs> by like the FromSoft lore community. Yeah. This is um, he added. Don't get mad at me because I became the mayor. You go raise that $22 million. You go knock on 35,000 doors. You deal with all the haters yelling at you and calling you names. But no one wants to do that. I always say, let your haters be your waiters. We talked about this <laughs> in an episode success. you weren't on. But he, yeah. says, like, he says, all my haters become my waiters at the table of success. Which is just about... God, what a cool thing. It's an amazing <laughs> image. I love the concept of the table of success. It's like it's like the card table where the presidents or dogs are playing the poker, <laughs> yeah. at, or Tony Soprano and The Godfather. And what are the waiters bringing you? <laughs> I don't know your food, your kale, <laughs> kale, yeah, yeah. the kale of accolades. <laughs> it is. It's it's grind set Valhalla is the table of success. It's the meat hall of the gods. I guess that's it. His Valhalla is like, it's like a dinner with Jay-Z that never ends. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was what the Vikings had. The fucking Asgard. You're just yeah. hanging out, drinking from a big old stein of kombucha, whatever the fuck he enjoys. Uh, two days later, he ap he appeared at an interfaith breakfast at the main branch of the New York Public Library. Ingrid Lewis Martin, the mayor's chief advisor, who is also a Christian chaplain, introduced him as one of the chosen, <laughs> adding, one hears about the importance of separating church from state. But we have an administration that doesn't believe in that. <laughs> well, I will. I, I will. <laughs> yeah, I will. First of all, say that any breakfast Eric Adams goes to is an interfaith breakfast. <laughs> He's got all of them. He is all religions. <laughs> you know, Ingrid was so right, Adams said moments later. Don't tell me about no separation of church and state. State is the body. Church is the heart. You take the heart out of the body. The body dies. That's a terrible experiment to do. Too. Yeah, <laughs> we did that. <laughs> I, did. I can't separate my belief because I'm an elected official. When I walk, I walk with God. When I talk, I talk with God. When I put policies in place, I put them in with a God-like approach to them. That's who I am. God. <laughs> God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's true. He he is a Roman style uh, living god emperor. That oh, is god. his. That's his conception of himself. All right, he's also Elohim. Yeah, <laughs> he's <laughs> like like like. From now on, I'm only addressing New Yorkers as a burning bush. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next one is so good. Okay, Adam's remarks were indeed controversial. In subsequent interviews, he leaned I in. I am God. <laughs> <laughs> stirs, <laughs> stirs a few things around town. It, uh, it's a bit controversial to traditional religious belief. <laughs> uh, he leaned into the subject. Some people, they see me go to mass and they get upset. <laughs> I'm outside mass shaking my fist at Eric Adams going, Arr! all I can say is get over it. He said that it was time to pray. He claimed that he'd been criticized in the past for expressing a strong belief in faith. In fact, in previous years, <laughs> he'd missed. <laughs> in fact, in previous years, he'd missed countless opportunities to discuss faith. Indeed, when the host of the podcast Faith Grind Inspire had <laughs> asked him one of their usual questions, out of Faith Grind Inspire, which word resonates with you? He replied, "Grind, man, grind." <laughs> <laughs> Faith grind expire. That's Faith, love, charity? No, thank you. <laughs> Faith Get that shit out of here. Oh, grind, man. Grind, man. It's grind. It's always grind. Adams now used uh, faith as an instrument of political dominance, a way to make haters waiters. He'd hinted at the strategy the previous spring at an event with religious leaders where he'd welcome collaborations with them. There will be those who will critique us, Adams told the room, smiling. Let's be clear. Lions don't lose sleep over the opinion of the sheep. There, there, was, you go. there was laughter and applause. It was a remarkable moment. At a meeting of religious shepherds, the mayor had rallied the room to a fuck the sheep message. <laughs> His comments weren't just unchristian. They were Nietzschean. As Adams once said, giving advice about self-presentation, everything about you must say power. <laughs> he is, in fact, yes. He is, he is the Ubermensch. He is the Ubermensch. Uber Uber That's the only thing we... Yep. Now he's Tywin Lannister. Yep. <laughs> it's like the first line Tywin Lannister says. Yep, yep. 
<laughs> say, yeah. I'm saying, if, if, if people think that they can take New Yorkers and we won't respond, then we are not a serious city. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this yeah. is what we are in the post political era, right? Yeah. Like we have the form of democracy, but the, the actual ability to vote for policy, which is the underlying premise of democracy, is gone. We all understand that. So, but politics is still happening, this zombie form of it. So, the only thing left is to fight over which man god that we are going to follow. <laughs> Do you know how much kale the mines in Adamsport produce? <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Zero, yeah. <laughs> we, we have 800,000 pounds of kale that we can play the, pay the Iron Bank of Bravos. <laughs> uh, Adams has sometimes said that the achievements of, of his administration will eventually be memorialized in the Museum of the City of New York. I asked him what this exhibition would contain, and he first mentioned his enhancement of an existing program to help young people in foster care. The cost of this is $10 million in a city budget that exceeds $100 billion. <laughs> he then cited a pilot program widely praised to screen for dyslexia in city schools. Yeah, that's right up there with Fiorello LaGuardia. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's a vision. Uh, a, a New York mayor can only do so much. Michael Bloomberg published a congestion... Uh, published a congestion pricing proposal in 2007, a similar scheme may finally be executed next year. But Adams often gives the impression of finding the political present less compelling than the, myth, the myths of his past and the glories of his future recognition. Yeah, why would you want to be in the present? Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> he told me, I think that the museum is going to show the uniqueness of a mayor who was not make-believe. He was authentic. <laughs> he was a blue-collar mayor. He's giving orders to the uh, museum curators in the future that when the Eric Adams wing of the Museum of New York is opened up, it should say, authentic, right over the <laughs> door <laughs> gates or door of it. Uh, he, he was authentic. He was, this guy was not make-believe. He's, he, he does have, a, like, I think he has a sincere vision for how he is supposed to improve the city in the long term and how he's, he's making it better. I think he really does think he's doing that, but it's not through policy. It is through inspiration. Like, he thinks that people are going to witness him being God and then find within themselves their capacity to just act like him. And if everyone in New York acted like the God King, then we would break and fix every problem. It's true. All right. Here, here's the end of the article. This is just the last sentence of the article. <laughs> Adams tells his staff that they should keep journals. This is an amazing moment for them, he said. This is going to be one of those great moments in American history. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please be my president. Uh, please yeah, please be president, Eric it's, it's Adams. It has to happen. Eric Adams, 2028, there is no self to kill. Yep. <laughs> the, the self only exists stably in the form of the haters as the shadow self. Yes. That you yes. define yourself yeah. against. Fuck. Uh, Eric fuck. Adams, 2028, will wield the Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but like, will he do the flame of frenzy ending on New York City or what? I could see Eric Adams going underneath Gracie Manor and finding the sealed away merchants, <laughs> the hot dog vendors. Yeah, the hot dog vendors who were sealed <laughs> under New York and <laughs> accused by Michael Bloomberg of harboring the frenzy flame. <laughs> uh, well, the Golden Order should have been content to see us cast by the wayside. <laughs> Uh, well, once again, we've done it, boys. Yes. Eric Adams, the death of the self. It's the only hope. It's there there the is no way. present. There's yep. only a mythic future. Yeah. But we have to kill your, you have to kill, not yourself, but just your sense of self. Yes. You have to, the ego must die. Yeah, the ego must die. So and it, also yeah. any consistency yeah. about your life story. Oh, oh, okay. Eric Adams, kill yourself and everyone you love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, we're not top of that. Yeah, now let's put a pin in it there. Yeah.